much now, buddy. You got that
when we have our prayer time today, I'm going to, um, uh, we're going to do uh, palms down and then palms up. And actually, uh, I'll explain that to you as we pray. And, you know, prayer is something that we all do. And uh, so this is going to be a chance for uh, all of us to pray together. But uh, let's sing the song, Lord, I Need You.
Now, brothers and sisters, would you turn your uh, palms up? And would you just uh, with request to the Lord right now? Would you with request for those that you're concerned about, ask God to meet them at the point of their need? Would you lift up to the Lord our country? The situation in Maine where many are mourning, where the injured are recovering. The situation in Israel and your Ukraine. Would you lift up to the Lord Caleb as he ministers, Pastor Caleb, as he ministers to Indian pastors and churches? Would you join me in praying that some of the lessons that Caleb is teaching that come from your heart uh, Lord, uh, would those pastors teach these lessons 20, 30, 40 years from now? Continuing abiding fruit. Lord, we love you and we give you praise. We thank you that we can lift all these things to you. Lord, I, I do pray that you would just... Uh, uh, rule and reign in Danielle's life. Thank you for her faithful service uh, to this church down through the years as the Bell Choir Director. God, thank you for her ministry in this place. Bless her abundantly. Lord, we would pray uh, today that you would just uh, rule and reign at the Fairview Missionary Church. Bless them as they worship me with Pastor Joel, as he preaches, may he preach with anointing and power. Lord, would you bless the Orland Methodist Church and Pastor Melissa. Uh, God, give them help from heaven today. May they find themselves on holy ground. And Lord, would you just uh, bless uh, the children and the children's ministry. Thank you. God, we prayed for months uh, for you to send kids our way uh, for us to Tell the stories of Jesus too. Uh, Lord, uh, help them to learn the songs of Jesus. And Lord, thank you for answering that prayer. God, uh, help us to be faithful uh, and faithfully minister to the kids that you've sent our way. Lord, we love you. We give you praise and glory and honor. Now, uh, teach us as your disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We will now receive the tithes and offerings. You can bring them forward to the basket if you have not done so already.
Heavenly Father, you've given us riches beyond measure. We can only return a fraction of what we owe you, but we ask you, Lord, that you will bless our offering and help us to use them wisely in your service and for your glory. Amen. You may be seated.
often scale of the descriptions. So we have two scripture readings. I'll be reading from Acts 2, verses 24 through 47 first, and then we'll switch to 1 Corinthians 16, verses 1 through 4. Now about the collection for the Lord's people, do what I told the Galatian churches to do. On the first day of every week, each one of you should set aside a sum of money in keeping with your income, saving it up so that when I come, no collections will have to be made. Then when I arrive, I will give letters of introduction to the men you approve and send them with your gift to Jerusalem. If this seems advisable for me to go along also, they will accompany me. And, first Corinthians. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe, and many wonders and miraculous signs were done by the apostles. All believers had everything in common, and uh, all the believers were together and had everything in common. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Weak, I can hardly see. 
Dr. Geezer said, well, I don't have any medicine for that, so here's your thousand dollars back. Dr. Young, but this is only 500. Congratulations, you got your music. That'll be $500. I like it. Um, what this has to do with the sermon? How much? Uh, I actually want to read Acts uh, 2, uh, 2 through 42 to you again. Or two, uh, chapter 2, 42 through 47, again to you. Uh, and I want you to be thinking about words that stand out. I'm, I'm going to be reading from the New Living Translation. All the believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship and to sharing in meals, including the Lord's Supper and to prayer. A deep sense of awe came over them all, and the apostles performed many miraculous signs and wonders. All the believers met together in one place and shared everything they had. They sold their property and possessions and shared the money with those in need. They worshiped together at the temple each day and met in homes for the Lord's Supper and shared their meals with great joy and generosity, all the while praising God and enjoying the goodwill of all the people. And each day the Lord added to their fellowship those who were being saved. Are there words that stand out to you, phrases that stand out to you as I... Uh, that stood out to you as I read the passage. Generosity. Generosity. What else? Devoted. Devoted. They, they gave themselves over to the apostles' teaching, the breaking of bread, the fellowship, to prayer. Uh, what else? Sharing. Sharing. What else? All of them. Everyone. All of them. Man. They were all, all together. What else? Yes. They increased in numbers. Yeah. Thank God for a growing church, right? Uh, what else? Anything else? They were in awe of God, or uh, they, there was a sense of awe that came over them all. Uh, the King James says uh, they had the fear of God, uh, a reverence. Uh, I, I think they were finding themselves on holy ground. They uh, met in large group settings. They met in small group settings where folks uh, knew their names and cared for their souls. Uh, there was joy. There was praise. <coughs> Sounds like a wonderful church to be a part of, doesn't it? As I read this, in, and this is a Bible that I use for... Uh, my devotions. As I read this, I underlined um, these words or these phrases. Um, they devoted themselves uh, to sharing in meals. All the believers met together in one place and shared everything they had. They sold their property and possessions and shared the money with those in need. They met together in the temple courts each day and met in homes for the Lord's Supper and shared their meals with great joy and generosity. Sharing. That's one of the first lessons we learn as kids, isn't it? To share, or at least our parents try to teach us to share. Um, as I thought about all this, uh, this is my first thought. We give because God gave first. And God keeps on giving. He gives to us over and over and over again. But we give because He gave first. Actually, uh, 1 John uh, 4.19 says this. We love because He first loved us. Uh, we can only uh, love God and we can love others only because God has first loved us. 
made the first move in our lives. We, and, and, and I just related that to giving too. Uh, we give because He's given, right? Now, John 3, 16, uh, you all know this. It says, for God so loved that He gave. God so loved that He gave. Um, I, uh, anybody know where this quote comes from? Hallmark. Hallmark. Uh, when you care enough to send the very best, they make lots of money uh, with that slogan. But, uh, you know, that really is a Hallmark slogan. That's God's slogan. If you care enough to give Jesus the very best. All that He had to offer. He gave for us. God gave sacrificially. Jesus gave His life uh, for us. He did for us what we couldn't do for ourselves. He wanted uh, to bring us back uh, from the brink. He wanted to deliver us from the power of sin. He, he wanted to set us free. And He gave sacrificially so that that would happen. God gave compassionately. He, he, he had compassion on us because... Uh, guess what, uh, friends? We are a mess. Everybody turn to your neighbor and say, you're a mess. <laughs> you enjoy doing that too much to Johnny and Nina. <laughs> we, we all, that, that's us, right? That, that's us as humans. Uh, we're, we get it wrong. Uh, we're selfish at times. We, we need a Savior. And Jesus is the Savior we need. Now, because God has given, because God has given first, we give because we can't love God and others without giving. Actually, there's a quote. Uh, several people are attributed to this quote, but uh, one is Amy Carmichael. You can give without loving, but you can't love without giving. You can give without love, but you can't love without giving. That's pretty profound, isn't it? And so when we love, we will give. We will give to God, we will give to others. We'll give. I, since she's not listening, <laughs> since she's in another room, I'll talk about that. <laughs> Don't tell her I said this. But uh, <clears throat> Debbie would do anything for her kids and her grandkids. She gives over and beyond. Those kids, those grandkids will never be able to say that their mom didn't sacrifice for them. Debbie gives because she loves. And when we love, Giving is a natural response, an automatic response. We want to give. We want to make a difference. We want to help. We give because we're growing to be more like Jesus. You see, the closer we come to God, uh, the more we become like God. God is a lover and God is a giver. And when we are maturing and becoming more like Jesus, when the Holy Spirit is doing that work in our lives, uh, brothers and sisters, we can't get closer to God. We can't grow to be more like God without loving and without giving. Just part of it. So, actually, uh, Wesley wrote a sermon years and years ago. And, and it, how many have read John Wesley's sermons? <laughs> if you're having trouble sleeping at night, <laughs> 
find some of these sermons and begin to read them. I, I mean, you, you know, it's 19th century, and he probably added a lot more than he wrote, but uh, one of his things that he wrote was the marks of the true Christian, or uh, it was a sermon, the marks of a Christian, and the marks of the Christian are Give. love. <laughs> and because we love, we give. Yeah. yeah. Okay, some guidelines from Forgiving. So that was Acts 2. You're getting two sermons for one today. How about that? You're getting your money's worth. Uh, so guidelines for giving. Give lovingly and compassionately. Everything that we do should be motivated by love, by faith, by compassion. Our motivation really does matter. You know, if we're given just to manipulate somebody, uh, that's the wrong way to give. If we're given just to manipulate others or to try to manipulate God, uh, just know this, God won't be bought off. God won't be manipulated by our money. But when we're giving out of love, uh, that makes all the difference. Give consistently. In this passage uh, that, uh, that Anita read to us, it says, uh, On the first day of the week, each one of you should set aside a sum of money. So, so uh, what Paul is saying is, uh, you know, we're collecting this offering for the saints in Jerusalem. Uh, they're having a difficult time, but we want to uh, share. And, and what you need to do is uh, you need to set aside uh, some each week on, and, and set it aside uh, on a Sunday. Now, some of us are paid bi-weekly, some of us are paid monthly, uh, some of us are paid, uh, you know, at, at other ways, uh, but the idea is that when we earn income, uh, part of that income uh, needs to go to the Lord, and we need to be giving consistently. I don't hear any amens. <laughs> I'll go on. Okay. <laughs> Give proportionately. Again, this passage says, each one of you should set aside a sum of uh, money in keeping with your income. Uh, so, those who are making a little, uh, you know, they may not be able to give as much. Those who are making a lot maybe uh, uh, should give more. We need to give proportionately. The biblical standard is a tithe. Uh, a tithe means tenth. So endeavoring to either give a tenth of your income or uh, moving towards giving a, a tenth of your income it is a faithful thing to do. And uh, you know, if others find out, I actually, uh, my mom and uh, my stepdad, uh, based on their income and what they reported to the IRS, they were audited a few times, or at least checked on, because uh, can you really be given that much? Why would you give that much? Uh, you, you see, the world thinks, given a tenth of your income, that's crazy. But when we love, we... Are you with me? Yeah. When we love, we yeah. give. <clears throat> give intentionally. Now, there's some planning in this. Each of you should... Set aside. Set aside. Yeah, you, you know, at that awful word, budget, <laughs> the word that we don't like, budget, each of you should set aside a sum of money in keeping with your income, saving it up. In, in other words, uh, you have a plan. Uh, one of the reasons I, I think that there have been times that uh, I haven't uh, given with a good attitude is that I haven't made the proper plans to give. I haven't handled my income and my finances well. I've, I've uh, taken on too much debt. Anybody ever taken on too much debt? Am I the only one? 
uh, take on too much debt, uh, uh, you, you know, you haven't planned, uh, you haven't got your, anybody ever wonder where your money went? <laughs> kind of flown away. Uh, you, you haven't planned. We haven't planned. And, and that creates stress when it comes uh, to giving and doing what we know that we should. Uh, so if, if we can budget, if, if we can make a plan, uh, that's a great thing. And you may be saying, uh, I don't know how to do that. There are folks here that know how to do that. So if you don't know how to do that, I'll get you hooked up with some folks that do know how to do that. And it'll bring some freedom to you. Then give cheerfully. Everybody smile at me. <laughs> By face, maybe. You might be mad at me. Give cheerfully. Each of you should give what you have decided to give in your heart to give. Not reluctantly or under compulsion. For God loves a cheerful, cheerful giver. Cheerful giver. In other words, this sermon isn't designed to put you on a guilt trip. I believe that, that God desires that we grow in this area and that it will produce freedom for us. And, and I'll, you know, especially as we give and as we plan to give, there is freedom in that. And, and there is something about being able to bless someone with some finance. <coughs> And just uh, be excited about doing it. How many were excited? Well, uh, I probably shouldn't ask you to raise your hands. Uh, <coughs> Debbie and I were able to give a little bit so that Caleb could go to India. And it was a joy to do that. Because we know what's going to happen in India with Caleb's ministry. And uh, when we give here, uh, uh, part, of, uh, part of what happens when we give here is Jerry gets to play on Sunday morning. <laughs> the bell choir gets to uh, play and us be in a warm sanctuary. Unlike a couple weeks ago. <laughs> it was a little cold in here. So we ought to be able to give with uh, cheerfully. Now, Here's a thought. If you're not able to give cheerfully right now, ask God to give you joy when you give. Ask God to give you joy when you give. And give by faith. Then, there's a, I must have repeated that. Give expectantly. Give expectantly. This is the Lord's promise for us. Proverbs 3, uh, 9 and 10. I could have picked out uh, a bunch of different verses for this. But uh, this is what Proverbs uh, 3, 9 and 10 say. Uh, Honor the Lord with your wealth and with the first fruits of all your crops. Then your barns will be filled to overflowing and your vats will brim over with new wine. In other words, uh, when we give, we will find uh, that, God, uh, that God does bless. Now, is this a prosperity gospel? No. I'm not saying that God will meet our needs. He will meet our needs. And if you think, oh, Tim, that, that's Old Testament. Here's Jesus' words on it. Give and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over will be poured into your lap. For the measure you use, it will be measured to you. In other words, Jesus is promising that there is blessing in our giving. Jesus actually quoted by Paul in Acts, uh, in Acts says, it is more Blessed to yeah. give than to receive. Now, there's how yeah, many like to receive? There's lots of blessing in receiving. I, I like, but what Jesus is teaching is it's more blessed. You, you wind up getting more joy uh, when you're able to give somebody something that they need. 
And you partner with God in it. Finances. Now, I'm Jay uh, Stevens has been our financial chairperson for years and years. And uh, he, um, in the new church council, he uh, focuses in on finance. And I asked Jay to come and just share a, a brief overview of where we're at uh, financially. And Jay's going to come and do that. <clears throat> You'll notice I didn't bring a lot of paperwork with me because I'm not going to bore you with the details. Um, just some general ideas. Um, we have money in our checking account. Our bills are paid. That's what I typically report at the meetings. We do get a detailed financial statement at any every month, and if anyone's ever interested in looking at it, I'd be delighted to sit down with you. A couple of general ideas right now. As is typical in this time of year, we are running a deficit for this year, which is pretty normal. The size of this year's is pretty normal. Um, but I would like to make three observations about this church's giving. One is that whenever I stood up here and said we need money, it happens. And you haven't heard us up here doing that because we haven't needed a special thing other than the, the mission giving that we've talked, that Tim talked about. Um, <clears throat> the second thing is this church always has uh, been very generous for outside the wall things, and we continue to do that. And the third observation is where we typically run a little short is in the giving. This is for the general fund, which keeps the lights on and that type of stuff. Um, and we are, this year, the same way as, as typical. We're a little behind on that. We're not in trouble because our leadership team tends to be pretty good stewards of the gifts that you do give us. But I'm standing here now and saying that additional giving for that between now and the end of the year would certainly help us end up in a better position. And the other thing is over the last couple of years, because the need has been great, that uh, even our, our uh, food pantry and emergency fund giving hasn't quite kept up with the current demand. And again, we haven't really come to you and ask you for more, but those are two areas or three areas that if you feel it in your heart to um, give more, I'm telling you there is, is some need there. But don't take this as a negative thing, because as I said earlier, this church always has been, and you always have been very responsive when the need arises, you respond. And I've, um, Tim always makes me do this because I am an optimist, but I've been cognizant of, <clears throat> of the giving of this church for, I'd say, 60 years, and it's always been true. So I have confidence that, that we will meet the needs and to do the ministry that we are seeking to do. Thank you. Thanks, Jim. Actually, you guys are way generous in terms of giving candy for Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> I had, uh, we had a great big old tub filled to the brim, and uh, we were generous with the kids, too. We gave out lots and lots of candy. Um, you probably have received a letter from me uh, this week uh, with a faith promise card. It may be that uh, some of you have uh, filled it out and want to bring it up. Uh, it may be that you want to think about it and pray about it for a little while longer. Um, but um, one of the things that we do is uh, we make promises to the Lord about what we're going to give uh, during the next year. And uh, that's been the uh, habit, uh, the 
way that we handle things uh, here at AMC, and, and so this is a chance to do that. Uh, it may be that uh, you haven't received the card and you want one, I've got some extras, uh, but I want you to, uh, if you haven't had a chance to do it yet, I uh, want you to think about it and pray about it, and uh, if God leads you to pledge, uh, we would be uh, glad to uh, receive the pledge card, the faith pledge card, faith promise card, uh, because it helps with the plan. Um, you still with me? Yeah. That's it? <laughs> uh, would you stand with me? Uh, and uh, we're going to sing the closing hymn, When I Survey the Wondrous Cross. I want you uh, especially to pay attention uh, to the last verse. It says, Were the whole realm of nature mine, that were an offering far too small. Love so amazing, so divine, demands my strength, my... I forget the rest of it, but <laughs> you get the idea. Uh, so if you've got a faith promise card, you can bring it up, and, uh, and then I'll uh, pray at the end of the service.
Brothers and sisters, may you go in God's grace and his mercy. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. Amen. Have a great week.